Live. And our way to a wonderful life message for today is titled, God Upside Down. God Upside Down. Now, we know that through, throughout the scriptures, we can read and we can understand about our relationship with God. That in the scriptures, in the Holy Bible, there's an evolution. The, you know, the first few books of the, of the scriptures are the Torah as well as the Old Testament of the Bible. And then we move into those teachings of Jesus, the gospel, the good news. And we know that Jesus evolved it all through his wisdom and his intelligence and his high state of high enlightenment. Because Jesus took those ten commandments and he, he <clears throat> recapped them into two, which is to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And equally important, he said, love your neighbor as yourself. And if you do those two things, then you don't have to worry about those ten commandments because you will fulfill them normally and naturally. Now, the great Dr. Murphy, Dr. Joseph Murphy, in his book, How to Use the Laws of Mind, tells us the ancient Hebrew mystics who wrote the Bible said that the devil is God upside down. God upside down. In other words, the devil is God as God is misunderstood by ignorant and primitive people. And he doesn't mean ignorant in a negative way, but people who are unaware, people who, people who have not let themselves become enlightened. The devil of theologians, he tells us, does not exist. The devil of theologians does not exist. It was created by them to account for the evil in the world. Why? Because they couldn't explain it. Evil, however, comes from our misunderstanding or misuse and misapplication of the one power. The essence of hell, says Swedenborg, the great mystic, is a desire to control another. The devils are negative, destructive thought forms which result in negative, destructive emotions compelling the person to act them out. Negative, destructive emotions hidden in the subconscious must have an outlet resulting in all manner of chaos and suffering. That's from the great Dr. Joseph Murphy. And we can see where this is the truth because we realize that as we read in the scripture that it's all God all the time. In him we live and move and have our being. And with God, all that God has created is good and very good. But yet we see all this violence and all these monstrous things that happen in our world. And we think, if it's all God, how, where does this evil come from? Evil being the word live spelled backwards and a diminishment, a destruction of life. Where does that come from? Well, it comes through that filter of man's consciousness, of his ignorance and his is a willingness to see things as the world sees them, see things as the world lets them think is possible, rather than see the possibility of, of the allness of the good that God is. So there are people who have twisted their minds so badly that they they can't even identify with the good. They can't even identify with God. They can't even identify with an infinite spirit that's always available to us. They can't identify with Jesus and and Buddha and Krishna. They can't identify with Isaiah and Jeremiah and Matthew, Mark, and Luke and John. They can't identify with any of that because they're so immersed, so immersed in the things of the world, the tragedies, the horrors, the the things that, that twist their mind into thinking that somehow, some way, there's a reality to the, the evil, but the evil begets evil. The consequences of evil is more evil the consequences of thinking only of the good, thinking towards God, brings all good things added into us, just as the mastermind Jesus tells us. Several years ago, I was sitting in a church service and I'm enjoying the message that was being presented, and it was interesting. It was developed around a spiritual principle, and all in all, it was very, very inspiring. <clears throat> but after the collection was taken, the minister instructed the audience that there were people available to pray for all of those in need of healing prayer. The minister told the audience that working with someone to pray for you was something they personally recommended and something they personally did, and by this time I was oblivious to whatever was being said after that. I thought, now, why does this minister think this audience requires healing? rather than see them in the way that God sees them, sees them in the image likeness that God has created them, sees them as that perfection of completeness and wholeness that God has given them in their spirit. Speak to their spirit, not to their physical body. Speak to their spirit, not the half-truths and the false ideas that may be present in their conscious mind. Speak to the spirit that knows the truth, 
and you won't think about people needing healing. I believe that our consciousness will really lead us to the right and spiritual decisions, the right and perfect spiritual choices for all of us if we just listen to our own higher self and let God, let God enter into our mind just as we read in the scriptures, incline your ear and come to me. Listen, listen for that guidance and that direction. A few years back, I attended a service at a Baptist church, and the priest, pre preacher yelled at the audience, You are all sinners, all of you, but Jesus can save you. Yet the mastermind Jesus told us, You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Why? Because there is something within us that already knows the truth, and when we read it, hear it, or think it, we agree with it on some level of our mind, our heart, and our soul. That something within us is that intelligence, that part of that image likeness of the divine, of God, of the good, which is the attribute of God often overlooked by religion. And it will serve us well if each day we take the time to affirm this intelligence is within us, guiding us, directing us to discern what is true and what is not. So many times people don't, don't think. They don't think about what they've heard about religion. You know, when we go, we go to school, we go to third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. Then we go to high school. Then we go on to college or vocational school, whatever we may do. And we don't stop with our education of the things of the world, of, of our education of knowledge. But so many people stop with their knowledge and awareness of God and their relationship with God. It's like... You know, I enjoyed the third grade. It was one of my favorite grades in school. I can always remember and never forget how much fun I had at that Paris grade school, Paris, Missouri grade school, and the third grade and all the friends I had and the things we did. And it was just a great time. But I didn't want to stay in the third grade. But so many people, they want to stay in the third grade when it comes to their religious beliefs. But Jesus evolved the teachings of the ancients. He evolved the teachings of the great mystics. He evolved the teachings of Plato and Socrates. He evolved the teachings of Isaiah. He evolved the teachings of, of all the people in the Torah and the Old Testament and the Bhagavad Gita. He said, we must look to the Spirit for everything and start letting God guide us, direct us. Let God be our all in all. Let God be our everything. Look to God for even the smallest things that we can imagine for ourselves and let God be a part of our life. Don't turn God upside down by thinking that evil has power, by thinking that there's something in the world that wants to destroy or diminish life. And as we see that word evil is live spell backwards, so we know that's a diminishment of life. Don't look to anything and give it the power. When you give it the power, it has power over you. You pull back that power and say, only God, only God is the power in my life. Only God is the presence in my life. Only God is the spirit in my life. Only God is the intelligence in my life. Only God can heal me, prosper me, and bless me. Only God can guide me and direct me. Negativity has been so imposed upon us by universal belief in good and evil, and this to me is in fact, is a fact and the truth. It's a fact and the truth. That universal belief in duality, good and evil, yet each and every one of us have the power within us to choose to live with those negative imp impositions on ourselves or not, or not. We can be influenced by many negative things and many negative people in our world, but our power to choose is greater than anyone else's ideas or beliefs about us. That's why God incarnated within each and every one of us that defining power, those defining words, I am, I am. Nobody can say I am for you or me. I am. Just as Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And he said, he looked out at his audience and he said, you too are the light of the world. That I am is within you. Say, I am the light of the world. Say it to yourself. I am the light of the world. I am being guided and directed by the spirit, intelligence, and power that created me to clothe my spirit in human form and has given me this day to enjoy it, to have an interest in life, to feel that zest and vitality and that radiance of the spirit as it moves through my mind, my heart, and my soul, as awareness, as new ideas, as, as an advancing spirit that wants to do more, see more, be more than I've ever been before. These greater things still, Jesus said, you shall do. These things I do, he said, don't worry about these things I do. Greater things still shall you do than you've done before and take that into your mind that that greater thing still 
is right there, but we must get rid of this God upside down stuff, this evil and this devil and all this insanity that causes us to believe that there's a power in the world that can obstruct that power of God, that power of love and intelligence and power that's always available to us. Most of us do not believe in what the theologians call the devil, but we do believe in obstructions, we do believe in delay, we do believe in lack of limitation. So whether we call these the devil or not, we have some work to do in our mind. We cannot allow our mind to see anything less than the good as reality. For if we do not believe, or if we do believe that the negativity is real, if we believe the negativity is real for ourselves or for someone else, we will find that once entertained and accepted in our mind, it can be revealed as such in our experience, as within, so without. Just as we read in the scripture, just as Jesus tells us the kingdom of God is within you, not low here or low there, but he could also have just as easily have said the kingdom of hell is within you. If your thoughts are on the negative, if your thoughts are on the evil, if your thoughts are on what's wrong with the world and what's wrong with your life, rather than what's right with the world and what's right with your life. Our true reality is a reflection of the qualities of God, infinite spirit, and our experience. How much do we let that spirit move to our mind, our heart, and our soul every day? How much do we let it move to our heart, our mind, and our soul every day? Or do we keep thinking that tomorrow or someday, someday things will be better, tomorrow or someday? You know, there are Christian Baptist ministers that keep saying, Jesus is coming again. Don't worry, Jesus is coming. Well, they think Jesus is going to do what do you think he's going to do? Jesus said, thy faith has made thee whole to everyone that he healed. Thy faith, he said, not my faith. Thy faith has made thee whole. So why can't you have that same faith that the, that the ancients had? Why can't we have that same faith that the primitive people had and believe that God is my all in all, that God is my everything, and that it is God itself, it's God's spirit, God's intelligence, God's power that's healing me, prospering me, blessing me, giving me the every new idea and opening doors of opportunity for me and letting those possibilities of a greater life, a more joyful life, a more abundant life enter into our mind. Jesus said, I have come to tell you that you can have life and you can have it more abundantly, but you must believe it. You must believe it if you're to receive it. So as we ponder the nature of God in our prayers and our meditations, it is impossible believe, to believe that God can be anything other than good infinite good, omnipresent good. The mystical Ernest Holmes writes in his book, Discover a Richer Life, he writes, let us believe in that something bigger than we are and come to trust it. Let us believe in that something bigger than we are and come to trust it. It had intelligence enough to make everything, including ourselves. It had intelligence enough to make everything, including ourselves, it governs by law, which controls everything, just as we are cognizant of the law of gravity and electricity and mathematics. Everything else is the spiritual laws are just the same. It's a sowing and reaping cause and effect law. God has created it, universal. It's for everybody all the time. Works the same for the saints. Works the same for the sinners. And who are the saints and the sinners? It's just man's opinion. Man's opinion. Let's get away from the man's opinions and get into the truth. And <clears throat> let us believe in that something bigger than we are and come to trust it. This is, from, this is from Ernest Holmes. It had intelligence enough to make everything, including ourselves. It governs by law, law of sowing and reaping, law of cause and effect, law of believing and accepting which controls everything, including ourselves, so why shouldn't we have an unlimited faith in it? Now, the mastermind Jesus' teachings were so simple, and what he said for himself, he was saying for all of us. So how do we know this? Because he said, and the key to life, the key to life, which is the Lord's Prayer, those first two words tell us Jesus' faith and belief about our relationship to God. He said, our Father, our Father, our Father. That means everybody's Father, our Father. He didn't say my Father, he said our Father. And so we know he understood that we are all one with the Father, created in the image likeness of God, created in the spirit of joy and happiness and peace and love and harmony and strength and confidence that we all have intelligence, we all have power. There's a spirit within us that's seeking to express itself greater in everything we do and all things that concern us, but we must let it do so. We must get our mind 
off the things of the negative nature, get our mind off the things that turn God upside down and put our focus and our love on God, our trust in God, our dependence on this divine principle that we call God. And know that we're one with this infinite intelligence that created all that we see and all that we can imagine for ourselves, that we are a part of it. Let not your heart be troubled, Jesus said, and let us not let anyone tell us that we have a troubled heart, but instead let's be steadfast in our faith that this something greater, this our Father, is always seeking to live through us, as us, and for us, as joy and happiness, as love and peace, as beauty and harmony, and as success and prosperity. And once again, I want to just remind everybody, just as, a, as evil, as the word live spelled backwards, negativity, illness, poverty, and lack is God upside down. God is the good. All the good that we can think about for ourselves and for others, all the good that we can imagine for ourselves and others, all the good that we can believe for ourselves and others, it all comes from God. God omnipresent good. As the poet said, it's closer to us than breathing, near than hands and feet that I believe in God, I believe and have faith in the almighty presence of intelligence and power and spirit in my life, that I can draw to that, from that power, that spirit and that intelligence, because God is the giver. God is the givingness, the livingness, the forgivingness, the ultimate of unconditional love, and that God never withholds. It's only the mind of the human, the human mind, only the human mind can withhold anything from ourselves. So let's not misunderstand God's love for us and lose our faith in that which sustains us and maintains us in the highest idea we can think for ourselves, in the highest idea we can think for ourselves. Let's go back to those words of the great Dr. Joseph Murphy. Dr. Dr. Joseph Murphy was one of the great teachers of of the philosophy of Jesus, and he understood the biblical <clears throat> words more so than anyone else. We know that the Bible is filled with all manner of wonderful and beautiful things that will inspire us. It's filled with universal principles. It's filled with immutable, changeless, universal laws, spiritual laws that will sustain us and maintain us as we keep faith with God. But we also know that it's filled with all kinds of mistakes and deletions and, and, and subtractions and additions, that it was all copied by man. Therefore, the original manuscripts of the Bible were lost by and large. So all that we see in the Bible now is an accumulation of what man could put together. And so many times they were just copied by people that didn't even understand what they were being, they were copying. And sometimes things were left out because the person copying it didn't understand it or maybe just didn't have enough time at the end of the day to include it. And so we know that, but we know that as we look to those scriptures for those universal spiritual principles that Jesus gave us, Isaiah gave us, Jeremiah gave us, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John gave us, that we shall find enough in there to keep our mind on God and to keep our life, our life progressing towards the good, the very good, the success, the happiness, the health, the prosperity, the joy of living. And Dr. Joseph Murphy tells us. The ancient Hebrew scriptures, or I'm sorry, the ancient Hebrew mystics who wrote the Bible said that the devil is God upside down. Said that the devil is God upside down. In other words, the devil is God as he, God, is misunderstood by ignorant and primitive people. Why? Because God is all there is. The devil of theologians does not exist. It was created by them to account for the evil in the world because they couldn't understand it. They couldn't explain that because when Paul tells us, in him we live and move and have our being, and Jesus says the kingdom of God is within you, and then we read in the book of Genesis that we're all, all life is created in the image likeness of God, and we express it to the level of our consciousness and our awareness that we are in that image likeness of God. They couldn't understand how they could explain evil to people so they created a devil they created something else even in the holy scriptures we can read jesus say get thee behind me satan so we know that that get thee behind me satan was just his his telling himself that that behind him all thoughts that there was anything to oppose god to oppose the good to oppose him and making a greater good teaching a greater good healing those into a greater 
the greater expression of hell, that all those old thoughts of the world, that satanic idea that there's something other than God, he said, get thee behind me. It's behind me. It's not with me. It's not going forward with me. That God is all there is. God is the allness. God is all in all. God is all in all. And that's the truth for you and me today, just as it was for Jesus. So the devil of theologians does not exist. It was created by them to account for the evil in the world. Evil, however, comes from our misunderstanding or misuse and misapplication of the one power, the one intelligence, the one spirit that is God. The essence of hell, the great philosopher with Swedenborg tells us, is the desire to control another. The desire to control another. The devils are negative, destructive thought forms which result in negative, destructive emotions compelling the person to act them out. Negative destruction, destructive emotions hidden in the subconscious mind, in that deeper mind, have an outlet resulting in all manner of chaos and suffering. And we just saw a good example of that this week. In near Springfield, Missouri, there was a man who had worked for a school district for, since 1998, 1998, and he went to this other neighborhood and picked up this girl who didn't even go to his school, and the people saw him, and they ran after him, and he went and murdered this young girl. That's, that's, so, that allegedly, he murdered this young girl. I mean, he's pleading not guilty, but all these people saw him, and they, they photographed the license plate on his truck, and they found the evidence of it. So we know that this man who was who was sane for, since 1998, all of a sudden that twisted something in his subconscious mind that accepted the evil, that accepted that, that gross idea to murder this child, something just snapped in his mind. And all the thought of God, all the thought of good, all the thought, all the thought of heaven was gone from his mind. All the thought of love and compassion, all the thought of human kindness was eliminated in that moment. So we know that we, the world is susceptible to those things. So the devils are negative, destructive thought forms which result in negative, destructive emotions compelling the person to act them out. Negative, destructive emotions hidden in the subconscious mind must have an outlet resulting in all manner of chaos and suffering. That's from the great Dr. Joseph Murphy and how true those words are. So just as evil is the word live, spell backwards. Negativity, illness, poverty, and lack is God upside down. God is the good, all the good that we can think for ourselves. Let us not misunderstand God's love for us and lose our faith in that which sustains us and maintains us and the highest idea we can think for ourselves. Who we are is important not only to the people in our lives, but important to the spirit that moves through our heart, our mind, and our soul throughout eternity. We are here because God caused us to be. We are happy, healthy, loved, and prosperous because God gave us the power to say that we are, to be that just exactly what we say ourselves to be and let ourselves realize that God is the good, that God is not upside down in my mind, my heart, or my soul, that right now, right now in this moment, I can confess to myself that I believe and I receive I receive that joyous, joyous recognition within myself that my faith is making me whole, that my faith... Is